Bringing you some breaking news out of college football where Texas A&M is set to hire Duke's Mike Elko. So please welcome back your new head football coach, Mike Elko. My vision for this program is very simple. Okay, we are going to build the premier football program in the country. Okay, we are not going to talk about it anymore. We are going to be about it. It's a beautiful Saturday here at Kyle Field. I want y'all to feel this today, man. D-line, we in the backfield all day. Click, click, boom! It's just a short trip down to Houston for the Texas Bowl, but the Aggies are long on prep in College Station before heading that way. Anytime you can play football again, it's just, it's a blessing. So um, coaches have been doing a good job, players have been doing a good job. It's just been a, a fun experience so far. Let's go brotherhood on me, brotherhood on three. One, two, three. Brotherhood. I think it'll be good, you know, I think it'll be a fun time, you know, we're spending Christmas together, so why not? We're already a brotherhood and we're always away from our families on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, so we're just gonna come together and have fun with each other. One might say this ain't the Aggies' first rodeo down in Houston. This program and these players are very familiar with the city. And with a little riding and roping, whole festivities begin. Definitely think of Texas and you think of rodeo, for sure. I mean, it should be a fun experience, though, for both teams, just to galvanize with each other and everything, though. It'll be fun to watch, honestly. I don't know too much about the, uh, the rodeo, but I think it'll be fun to see and interesting. Hey, you see how we doing? Big cowboy head. Yo, B, you gotta get like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just excited to see my teammates just try to go out there and just do their thing. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to laugh at <laughs> Final paces for the game are made just down the road from NRG Stadium at Rice University. I think prep has been good. You know, there's a lot of changes, but sometimes change is good, you know, so we've just been adjusting to it and making the most of what we have. Put in um, several new plays and just working every day, just coming out and trying to get it all together for the game. But everybody's excited. Um, anytime you can play football again, it's just it's a blessing. So um, coaches been doing a good job, players doing a good job handling the situation. But it's just been a, a fun experience so far right now. Tempo has become key in any football game. But on the track, the Aggies quicken the pace as the bowl week races on. Moving on to, we at K1 Speed Racer. You know, I'm not taking no L's, all dubs, because I'm a speed racer. You feel me? My boy Mark Nabu. You know, I'm a Formula One racer, if you don't know that. What's the, no, what's the, what's the Formula One racer? Lewis 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 they call me Lewis Hamilton for a reason. Oh, no, right. Nabuski, that's what I call him, Nabuski. That's it for today. Happy Christmas Eve, and we'll see y'all tomorrow. Then there's a time to slow down and enjoy one another. On Christmas night, 
the Aggies come together to partake in dinner as a team in downtown Houston. A lot of us, our end goal is to be in the NFL and have a great career in the NFL. So I think this is putting our best foot forward in the NFL stadium. It's just nice to have us in a great location, Houston. I mean, that's my home. Um, my family's going to be there, and I feel like it's not too long for the uh, 12th man to come. And I know it's going to be an amazing game. I know they're going to show out and show up. The Pulse Texas A&M football is presented by 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M athletics, and ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M athletics. Energy Stadium here in Houston, the site of the Texas Bowl between Texas A&M and Oklahoma State. You hear me? We're going just like that. Like that. We ain't got no, we all we got, we all we need. Let's go, man. Hey, let's go. Fun. Somebody tapped me and said, let's go. No matter what the situation was, good or bad, the only response you have is, I got you. You guys are last standing. You guys decided to be here. There ain't no other response to have, but I got you. You got actions, you got words. And you guys show the actions of, I got you. So today, we ain't got no damn pressure. Everybody talking about who ain't here. They need to start talking about who is here. That's right. That's right. But you guys got to go out there and let them know who's here. Aggies, Cowboys, underway from NRG Stadium here in Houston. The Aggies start at the 35-yard line. Jalen Henderson is your quarterback. Roll to the left. Jalen Henderson throws on the run and just at the 47-yard line complete. Jade Walker, the first down catch for the Aggies, is down at the 33-yard line. There's three trainers around him right now, and there's some urgency as far as getting some attention to Jalen Henderson. The backup is the true freshman, Marcel Reed. And you get to your fourth quarterback. I mean, most teams never lose their starting quarterback. The Aggies have lost three quarterbacks this year. In what felt like a bad dream, an already thin A&M roster loses quarterback Jalen Henderson to a broken arm on the first play. The reality is they have to press on. Oklahoma State gets a field goal on their first drive. And Marcel Reed steps in behind center. It's called second and six. It is a Martin Hanna's right up the middle. What a big hole that he boots right through up ahead to the 42-yard line. Flag is down on the completion. Moves Muhammad, who spins and gets to the 20-yard line. He Reed back in the end zone. Off the shoulder and in. Complete. 37-yard attempt for the right hand. Good snap and hold to Randy Bond. Ties this game at three. The Cowboys are trying to make it a shootout through the air. The Aggies are trying to keep up. Too fake to him. Throwing. Oh, what a grab by Moose Muhammad wow. with one arm. He gets that one arm at the 50, hooks that in, 
gets another four yards, a 29-yard completion to the magician Moose Muhammad. That was an incredible catch. I just saw it on replay. It was better than it was in full speed. That's one-handed. One-handed up in the air. It's on a third and two, all wide open. He's got Jaden Platts. It's it become his new favorite receiver, Marcel Reed, to Jaden Platt, all the way down to the 28-yard line. Right to left. The handoff of Mari Daniels slips back to Marcel Reed, going for the back of the end zone interference. And holding. Take your pick. Marcel Reed looks right, throws off his back foot, complete. Max Wright to the seven yard line. Officially a 24 yard attempt. Jacob Grant with the snap. Nick Constantino with the hold. Randy Bond kicks his second field goal. The Aggies have hung in, but Oklahoma State is still gaining ground through the air. Two second quarter scores have them up 24 to 6 at the break. Hey, listen up. Listen up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Listen up. Listen like up, y'all. Like we talked about from day one, okay? This is y'all team. You guys decide to stay around for it. Don't stop fighting. Got another half. We're going to put our ass off. We got them. Take advantage of the, uh, 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 of the, of the coaching that coaches just came in here and talked to you guys about what we got to get done. Believe it in and do it. I told you this last time. Y'all give everything you got but up. If you truly believe that, you get on this field. If you don't believe that, you got nothing against you. I'm going to still love you to death. If you don't believe that, you stay in here. But I know everybody here is going to be able to fight this thing through. Defense, you up first. You don't got to fill on third down or not. Yes, sir. Let's get it done. All right? Offense, make it easy for 10. Keep them on track. Keep them on pace. Let's just play. All you got to do is play your ass off. Come back in here. To, come back in here to end the game. We'll see where we at. Don't worry about the scoreboard. Just play your ass off. Let's go out here and get warmed up. Defense, you'll be up first. Set the tone. Let's go. We'll stretch. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's stretch. Come on. Still mid-back. 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 Still
with the quick Jaday Walker. Marcel rolls to the right. Can he get the corner? He can. It's wide open, and he's got a touchdown. Leaping into the end zone. Touchdown. Haggies, 20 yards, Marcel Reed. Receivers to the left, one to the right. It's a gift of court. Not even close. Gabriel Bradlow Dindy with that tackle. I mean, he never got back to the line of scrimmage, and now a flag. Is it finally on Gordon for talking? After the play, personal foul, offense number zero. 15 yard penalty. The down counts. It's fourth down. One too many times. He finally. Did I mean, he's been a prima donna the whole game, and finally he got busted for it. Aggies down 31 20. Screen. Amari Daniels, 30, 25, 20. Cuts back inside the numbers. Fumbled the football oh. inside the five. Oklahoma State has it. Oh, no. The fumble slows the Aggies' momentum. Someone needs to stand up and stand tall. No one's better suited for that role than the 12th man. Each side, receivers are stacked. Balls on the right hash, 42, it's a third and nine. Bowman slings across the middle, too high, and it's intercepted at the 30-yard line. Sam Matthews, the 12th man with the pick. Sam runs all the way down the field to the A&M end zone. And the 12th man, with the 12th man, the second pick for the Aggies, 11.07 to play. A Randy Bond made field goal is followed by a Cowboy misfire. Gives the Aggies one last shot. 20 for 32 for 361 for Marcel Reed. 43 yards away, empty backfield. Marcel Reed's going to heave. Rolls to his left, throws to the end zone, intercepted by number five, Kendall Daniels. Oklahoma State, 31. Texas A&M, 23. Players, thank you guys. I told you this. It didn't come out how we wanted, but I asked you guys to go back out there and fight your ass off and just shot. I thought y'all did that. I'm sure, maybe not in the win column, I remember you guys, but the way you fought, because when a lot of guys in the ghetto had to make decisions for what was best for them, and I still love those guys, I'm sure you do too, you guys remain a part of this thing to finish it through. And myself, these coaches, I we appreciate you guys for that. It takes character to go through something hard, transition, loss, whatever it may be. And this team will never be the same again. But you guys will be remembered for what you've done, the way you've done it. As you guys stick together, this program going to the top. And all faith in Coach Uncle that he's going to take this thing to the top for you guys. But I'm going to be looking forward to watching. So I tell you guys, stick together. It's going to be a brotherhood. No matter who the coaches is, you guys, this is your team. Stick together. I love y'all. And I appreciate and thank y'all. So I thought y'all fought y'all. Let me get a pack of that. I'll forever remember the guys in this locker room, everything you guys gave. And thank y'all. Coaches, thank y'all. Support staff, thank y'all. Let's get a prayer. Let's get a break. Let's get dressed. We're we'll ready for what's next. The Pulse Texas A&M football is presented by 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M athletics, and ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M athletics. With the ending of a season, a new era begins. Mike Elko has been at work as the head coach of this program. 
he and the Aggies are weaving through transition, while college football is doing the same. I don't think, um, you know, until you get into this world where it's, it's portal, it's recruiting, it's NIL, it's new staff, like dealing with all of that all at the same time, uh, this is a whole new era of college football and um, you're prepared for it because you know that's what the job is, but I think when you hit the ground running, uh, it's just moving at a much different speed than it ever has. I think you have to compartmentalize what's important. Uh, I think you have to wake up every day and have a plan and then obviously be ready to, to move because you don't know what hurdles or what obstacles are going to get presented over the course of the day. And, and what you can't do is get frustrated and what you can't do is, is panic because there's times where um, you, know, you feel like, okay, I just got to panic and do this and get it over with. But, but you have to make sure that you do things the right way. Uh, and I think that's the one thing I just kept telling myself through this is uh, if it takes a little bit longer, if it has to be a little bit slower, it's okay. Let's build this infrastructure the right way uh, so that we have a very solid foundation moving forward. And that's what he'll build upon. Knowing the rock to all of it will be those who play for him. I mean, Coach Elko is great, honestly. I already knew him back from recruiting, so from the first time we caught up, it was just catching up from the last time we talked back in uh, December. But honestly, I think he's going to be great for our program, a great defensive mind, and he also has a, a good hand in the offense as well. So I think it's a good mesh. I think it would be best for the program. And me and Coach Elko had a great relationship, honestly. He was the coach that thought of me the highest. He always kept me a priority. We always talked. We were on the phone. He would come to Temple and see me. I would go to Durham and see him. You know, so we have a great relationship, and I'm happy to finally play for him. How do you feel about Mike Elko now in town to lead the program? Um, I, I feel good about it. I feel really good. He's showed things in the past couple of weeks or a month that he's here that I haven't seen in a long time. So, I mean, just the first impression was great. Um, and since then, I've only seen good things. Um, he's truthful with us, and I can tell um, just by the, how the way he presents himself, how he uh, acts around us, how he talks to us how he appreciates us, he's just real with us, I can just tell. Wow, man, I love that guy. He's real personable, um, straightforward, um, honest, and I think he's got the players and the staff's best interest, whoever he decides to bring in. Um, I think uh, he'll do a good job. I know some of the old guys, they, they have been coached by him, so um, the all I heard was nothing but great things about Coach Elko, and um, that just made me happy to hear that from those guys. And, Coming from Duke, I know he's a winner. You know, he turned that program around. They beat Clemson, so it was just, uh, just good to, to have that vibe. With the ending of a season, a new era begins. Mike Elko has been at work as the head coach of this program. He and the Aggies are weaving through transition, while college football is doing the same. I think Aggie fans need to get excited that they're going to have a team that represents who they are and who they want to be. We're going to be a blue-collar group. Uh, we're going to have tremendous work ethic, tremendous toughness, tremendous grit about how we play the game of football. Uh, we're going to have a lot of passion about how we represent this university. Uh, and they're going to see a team that's going to go out and maximize who they are. And I think everybody knows if we can maximize who we are, what we're capable of. And, and that's been the message to the team. That's been the message to fans. Um, now, we got to roll up our sleeves between now and August and go to work to make sure that that becomes a reality. Um, but that's, that's what this program will be about moving forward.